Hey everyone, welcome to another NLP video. Today we're looking at the paper Improving Language Models by Retrieving from Trillions of Tokens by DeepMind. We have seen large advances in large-scale language modeling in the last couple of years by models such as GPT-3, capable of generating realistic outputs using various of input prompts. However, one notable limitation of those language models, or there's two notable limitations of those models. One is that they are very huge, requiring billions of parameters, hundreds of billions of parameters. And second one is that the output generated by those models might not be necessarily grounded by um, realistic facts occurring in the real world. So they might be just generating hallucinations that might not correspond to any real data that we have. Around. And in this paper, they're trying to address those two limitations by proposing a new model called Retrieval Enhanced Transformer or Retro, capable of matching the performance of GPT-3 and Jurassic 1 on the pile, despite using up to 25 times fewer parameters. So let's take a look at this. How does this model work? Given an input sequence, such as the 2021 Women's US Open was won, the goal is to generate an output such as by Emma Raducanu, she defeated, and so on and so forth. The retro model contains two components. First, we have a standard language model-like component similar to the other models like GPT-3, where you have a lot of neural layers containing self-attention, various other layers, which generate, aim to, to optimize generation of the output sequence autoregressively. In addition, the retro model contains a retrieval component able to query a large data set of paragraphs from the web, books, news articles, Wikipedia, and GitHub for code. This database contains over 2 trillion words. Given the input sequence, the retrieval component fetches a number of relevant paragraphs from this database using approximate nearest neighbor search. Then these paragraphs are passed to a frozen transformer encoder model, which produces an embedding for each of those paragraphs. This information is provided as an extra input to the standard language model setup. And this extra information is used to condition this language model further, grounding the model in those facts extracted from this database. This leads to outputs which are more factually relevant to what's in the database and also seems to lead to outputs which are less less random, they are more factually correct. It seems so from the results in the paper. And the main results of this paper is that this language model can get away with containing much fewer, par much less parameters than other large-scale language models. It's able to achieve similar performance for much less parameters. In the paper, with 7 billion parameters, they're able to achieve the same performance as the models that contain over 100 billion, billion parameters. This model can then additionally be further fine-tuned for a target downstream task that might be of interest, interest to you, similar to the other language models. And it's important to know also a little bit about how it differs from other similar approaches, because there has been a, a number of trials at this already, integrating external knowledge into language models. I even have a few videos on this, I believe, on my channel here. One major difference to the previous methods is that this Retro method is using a database that is much larger. Previous methods have attempted to use mainly Wikipedia, I believe. Here we have a huge number of collections of also news, GitHub, and so on and so forth. Furthermore, this retro model is retrieving a much larger number of neighbors. So it's encoding a much larger number of tokens to then input to the language model. And finally, some of the previous methods are actually trying to do this whole retrieval-based language modeling in an end-to-end -end fashion fine-tuning this encoder as well as the language model, the, the, the decoder component as well. And in this case, the retro model is actually freezing this encoder, transformer encoder model, and then just inputting always the same embeddings to this, to this decoder model, which seems to potentially have some benefits. You can read more this, about this in the paper. But in overall, this seems to be an interesting approach to achieving a more efficient language modeling, more factually grounded language modeling for yeah for fewer parameters. So this is this is all for now. I encourage you to check out the paper and the blog post. It's pretty nice. And I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye bye.